Point of order, John Nicholson. Uh, thank you very much. Indeed, on a point of order, Madam Deputy Speaker, on the 19th of May, when responding to a question from the Honourable Member for Ealing Central and Acton, the Secretary of State for Digital Culture, Media and Sport claimed that the Channel 4 reality series Tower Block of Commons deceived the viewing public using actors rather than real Tower Block residents. She said, and I quote, they were not really living in a flat. They were not real. They were actors. Indeed, she claimed that a number of the participants had confessed this to her at a subsequent dinner in the House of Commons. Yeah, uh, look, one of my favourite Channel 4 programmes is Tower Block of Commons. I think we've chatted about it before. You were on it as a young MP oh, yeah. in the South Acton estate, <laughs> being sent to see how the other half live. Well, I'm just curious. But then I discovered later they were actually actors. Oh, were they? <laughs> I did not know. Or the MPs or the... Uh, <laughs> no, 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 the, the people in. So a a Channel show. 4 production, actually. It was, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so the parents of some of the people, of the boys in that programme, actually came here to have lunch with me and contacted me to tell me actually they were in acting school and that they weren't really living in a flat and they weren't real. Um, headline for tomorrow. Yeah, they're actually oh. actors. And even, um, if you remember, there's a pharmacist or somebody that I went to see who prepared food. She was also um, paid in an actress as well. So. It's a serious charge, not least since the Secretary of State currently holds the fate of Channel 4 in her hands. Now, Channel 4 has now investigated, interviewed the production company and all the participants. The people who dined with the Secretary of State said the conversation she cited never happened. And Channel 4 has released a detailed report rebutting the Secretary of State's claim. The Select Committee Chair wrote urgently to the Secretary of State, offering her the opportunity to withdraw her claim, but she's refused to do so. Now, misleading the Select Committee is obviously a serious matter, so can I ask for your guidance on what I and other members can now do, given the impending recess and the Secretary of State's possible impending flight to another place? I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his point of order. Um, I first caution him to be very careful when he says in this place that an Honourable Member has misled anyone in the course of their duties um, in this House before a committee or before uh, the Chamber. If any misleading has been done, then it will of course have been inadvertent. And I'd be grateful if he would just in the first instance acknowledge that any misleading would be inadvertent. The Secretary State has a reputation for extreme probity, so I'm sure that's the case. I, I thank the Honourable Gentleman. That's probably as good as I'm going to get. <laughs> um, uh, the Honourable Gentleman will appreciate that, of course, it's not for the Chair to assess whether evidence given to a committee is or is not accurate. But I understand why he wants to raise the point before the House today. And uh, of course, if the committee concludes that information has been given to them which is not in fact accurate, then it will be up to the committee to decide how to pursue the matter and possibly construct another evidence session. <laughs>